chapter 13. In all this, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he would never speak to them except in parables. This was to fulfill the prophecy, I will speak to you in parables and expound things hidden since the foundation of the world. Coming to his hometown, he taught the people in their synagogue in such a way that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? This is the carpenter's son, surely. Is not his mother, the woman called Mary, and his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Jude, his sisters too, are they not all here with us? So where did the man get it all? And they would not accept him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is only despised in his own country and in his own house. And he did not work many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Jesus returned to his own town and taught the people in the synagogue. Familiarity closed their minds to what he was saying. They were astonished at his words, but said, Surely this is Mary's son. Do we ever allow familiarity to cloud our vision and hearing so that one cannot grow spiritually? Wanting to be as kind and as gentle and as loving as we possibly can be in the circle of our family life, for me, is law number one. But, being a human being, I can recall times when I have behaved in a totally opposite way, only to be overcome by grief immediately. Yeah. The Lord never lets me off the hook. Mm. If I do something outside of, of that loving kindness, I know immediately, and I have to retract, I have to. And if the person has moved off where I can't tell them I'm sorry, I seek them out and say, you know, what I just said to you is terrible, and, and I'm so sorry because you don't deserve that. You deserve to be loved and to be cared for. Isn't it hard, though, with family? Because why is it harder with family? I can be such a nice person with... For, for strangers. With yeah, strangers, I know. and I would never do that, but it's almost like we feel like they should know better. Well, uh, I've often thought about that very question is, why is it so hard? And I think it's the familiarity that I mentioned there in the insight. Uh, we live so closely together and we're together so much that every little thing then kind of can stand out. And I'd say, well, I don't, I don't agree with you. And yeah. I can let them know in a very ugly way mm -hmm. instead of saying, well, can we just discuss that mm -hmm. rather than putting them down because I don't agree with them. But with a stranger, we're afraid to do that yes. in case we lose their friendship. Yes. Know. We know that we're with our family all the time, regardless of who we are or what we become, they're going to be part of us. Yes. Well, you've got, you have family that are not walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Is that difficult when you see them? Like how, how do you want to respond if you could? Like, well, what I do, especially <clears throat> with those that have wandered away, is to e be even more loving toward them and to keep in contact with them. And I say to them every time, look, I carry you in my heart and you're in every one of my prayers and I want you to come to Jesus fully. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. So it's not your job to condemn? No, it isn't. It's God's, God's job to judge and, and, and pass judgment. Mine is to encouraged to advise to to bring Jesus and his love into their life again
by whatever means. A Prophet by Father Bob A prophet arises and is not received, especially in his own environment, even in his home. The prophet always presents something new. Often it appears startling, disturbing. Yet, it is really not new at all, but the reaffirmation of something old. The prophet opens up a new way, one that is so simple. People see it as a trick and openly reject it immediately. He reveals to people the darkness of their minds, their refusal to move beyond, and hence remain mired down. What he reveals is revelatory of our lost trust, of our fear of our own poverty, which could lead us into God's presence. It's instructive for us to recognize that Jesus was not accepted by many in his own hometown in Nazareth because they thought that they knew him and so they, they missed uh, who it was that he really was. We think of how familiarity breeds contempt or how sometimes things are too close to home and we can miss what is right in front of us, what seems ordinary, and so forth. And so as we journey through Lent, we pray this day that God will open our eyes and hearts to recognize that which comes to us in ordinary ways by that which seems familiar, but uh, is the means by which we are led to Christ and to life in his name. Let's join our hearts together as we pray this day. Almighty God, draw our hearts to you. Guide our minds. Fill our imaginations. Control our wills. So that we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.